Hey everybody, um, so today we are doing um, another Agatha Christie review. This one is Appointment with Death. Now, um, this is one that um, I've actually skipped a bunch of times. Like, at times when I could have read um, an Agatha Christie, I saw him like, mm -hmm. um, and it's probably because of my authority issues that um, when I saw the word appointment, I was like, eh, screw that. I'm going to be late for that appointment. You know what I'm saying? But um, in all actuality, like that could seriously be why I've always put this book off. But um, the cover on the newer version, I just thought was so cool. And it's so simple. Um, so I totally dug it. Um, and there, there is a question. Hopefully I'll remember to come back to it. Um, but this was a lot of fun. And the reason is, is because um, with Agatha Christie... Since I've never been to England, a lot of times, um, I can't relate, um, geographically with the stories. Um, but oddly enough, um, I spent three months in the Middle East a long time ago and, um, was in Amman. Um, and went to Jerish and uh, Moab and all these places and Petra and Petra is amazing and um, a, a big majority of this takes place in that area so um, that was really cool and just being able to kind of relive those memories that I had um, was a lot of fun. So most of you won't have that with this book, but for me, it was, um, it was just great. And then when they're actually at Petra and um, they're talking about the Red Rocks and um, that they would have people camp and some people could stay in the caves. Like, I know what caves they're talking about. Um, so, like, and that's where, um, the crime and stuff takes place. So, like, just visually, like, I had such a great image of this whole bit. So that was really cool for me. Um, with the, um, I can't remember their last name. Oh. Anyway, so the story is about this family that has this um, very tyrannical matriarch, old mother, and all these adult children that she still has like a super grasp, a tight grasp of, and they can't do anything. They have learned no social skills. They don't understand um, what it's like to just be normal people because of how the mother has raised these people. And um, they're not allowed to talk to strangers. They're, um, it's very weird. Um, but it, it was really interesting because, um, especially with Agatha Christie stuff, at least the stuff I've read, <clears throat> most of the characters in Agatha Christie books are, um, upper class, well-to-do, well-spoken, um, everyone has their shit together, okay? 
And this family is an American family. And they all have issues. Every single one of them. And um, some of them could barely function. And um, on this trip, um, there's a bunch of other people. There's um, a woman who just finished her MB, I think is what some chick gonna be a psychiatrist or psychologist or something um and then some dude from france who's like this world-renowned person on schizophrenia which is convenient um a couple of hoity-toity politician type like wives of politicians um and of course our good buddy um Pedro. um and we don't, we get, um, Poirot in the very first chapter. And then we don't get a lot of him. Like there's, I think, one other part where he is there. But then we don't really get him until the middle of the book. And if you saw my review on Sad Cypress, I was really disappointed in that. But this book, I think because of me and being there before and um, the characters being so different um, that, uh, that it just, uh, I didn't mind it. Um, the cast in this one I liked a lot better um, than not just Sad Cypress, but a lot of um, Agatha Christie books I've read. Like, as a whole, the characters were great. Um, and I can't remember what her name is. If any of um, the UK viewers, um, the tyrannical mother in this, oh, what's her name? She reminds me of um, the chick from Coronation Street. Like the old crotchety lady from, like, way back when. Um, like, from when the show started in the 60s up through the 80s. Um, I want to say Enid, but I don't think that's her name. Um, you know who I'm talking about, the big um, bulldog face chick, old lady. Um, that's who the tyrannical mother reminds me of, like a cross between her and Throw Mama from the Train if you know what I'm talking about, um, or, um, Mrs. Fratelli from the Goonies, um, but more the chick from Coronation Street, so that might have been why this book was so much more fun for me. Um, but while they are off visiting Petra, um, this tyrannical mother is, like, holding everyone under her thumbs and stuff like that through the whole thing. But, um, I don't know how to describe this without giving too much away. But, um, somebody dies, obviously. And, like with a lot of other things, it could be natural causes. Um... They could wait until they get back to um, civilization and um, wait for toxicology reports and all this stuff. But since Poirot's there, they want to know the truth. And so um, he digs into the truth. Somebody brings up what happened on... Um, murder in the Orient Express and says I know what happened on the Orient Express and he says how did you know and she's like so it's true how does she know like um, I know that there are some of the Poirot stories have been told in accounts um, by, like, Hastings and stuff like that. But, like, 
is that like a known thing in the in the Christie verse that everyone knows about every case Poirot does? Because um, if so, that's kind of fucking incriminating. Um, depending on what Agatha Christie book you're reading. So, um, like, but he seemed shocked. And he asked, how does she know? And she never tells him. So, that was, like, my one, like, how, what, huh? And that bothered me. <laughs> so, um, if you know the answer to that question, please tell me. Because that was driving me crazy. So, um, yeah. Um, appointment with Death. I would have given it a different title. Um, like, uh, oh crap, someone's gonna get murdered in Petra. Or something like that. Um, kind of rolls off the tongue. So, um... Yeah, so we will see you later. Bye-bye.